Welcome everyone to episode number four in our five minute Bible study through each chapter of the Bible. Uh, If you've made it through the first three and you're back for four, I commend you for your consistency and I will keep going if uh, if you keep going. (laughs) Just so you know, all the information that I'm presenting is available for free as a digital download on our website at tobelikechrist.com. We've got handouts for all this information, each chapter that we've been reviewing. You can download those. They're free in large part because we have patron supporters who uh, support this work so that these resources can be made available across the world at no cost. All people need is an internet connection. So big thank you to the patrons. If you're interested in that, there's a link on my YouTube channel where, uh, actually and on the podcast, I think, where you can sign up to be a patron. Okay, let's talk about Genesis chapter 4. When did the events of this chapter take place? Well, God allowed the earliest men and women to live extraordinarily long lives. And that's important to recognize when you're trying to date the early chapters of the Bible. Adam lived to be 930 years old. I can't even imagine living that long. And his grandson, Enosh, died at the age of 905. So we're covering vast periods of time here, just talking about the lifetime of one or two individuals. So the lives of the characters mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 specifically span the first 1,650 years of Earth's history. Let me repeat that. The lives of the characters mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 span the first 1,650 years of the history of the universe. Who are the key characters in this chapter? Well, we've got a few new ones. We have Cain. He is the oldest son of Adam and Eve, and he was Earth's first murderer. So if you thought that the story went sour in Genesis chapter 3, unfortunately it continues to go a little bit sour in chapter 4. Cain had a brother named Abel. This was the second son of Adam and Eve, and he was murdered by his brother Cain. And then, just a general group, there's this this family of Adam and Eve who are mentioned here. Chapter 4 concludes with a genealogy or family tree of the growing population of the earth. And there's several key characters that are mentioned in our outline section that we'll get to in a little bit. Geographically speaking, where did these events take place? Well, Adam and Eve were removed from the Garden of Eden back in chapter 3. We aren't told exactly where they settled following their eviction, but this chapter picks up in wherever that location was. Chapter 4 tells us that Cain's family settled east of Eden in the land of Nod after God banished him for murdering his brother. And keep in mind that the chapter covers a thousand plus years of history. Adam and Eve's family probably spread out to many locations during this time as their their numbers multiplied and the years progressed. Now let's talk about the key events of this chapter in our outline. The first section, verses 1 through 8, the story of Cain and Abel, and unfortunately it's not a happy one. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel, which we mentioned. Cain was a farmer by profession, and his brother Abel was a keeper of sheep. Now, both brothers prepared a sacrifice in honor of the Lord. Cain offered some of the produce of his field, while Abel offered the firstborn of his his flock of sheep. We aren't told all the details, but God was pleased with Abel's offering, but he disapproved of Cain's offering. And Cain was so consumed by jealousy and by anger that he killed Abel while they were out in the field together. In the second section, verses 9 through 15, God curses Cain for murdering his brother. So we had some curses after the sin in Genesis 3. Now we've got some more specifically directed towards Cain. God approached Cain, and he asked him where his brother had gone. Obviously, he knew, but Cain replied with the famous words, quote, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? But God knew what Cain had done, and he placed a curse on him as punishment. Because he had spilled his brother's blood on the earth, the earth was going to be cursed, and it was no longer going to produce a harvest for him. And so Cain could no longer be a farmer. He was to wander as a fugitive on the earth. Now, Cain protested the severity of his punishment, uh, saying that he was concerned that when people realized what he had done and who he was, that they would kill him. So the text says that God placed a mark 
of protection on Cain. And we don't know exactly what that mark was, but the mark prevented men from attacking him. They somehow knew that he was protected by God. And then at the end of this chapter, verses 16 through 26, we have the expansion of the human race. The rest of chapter 4 contains a genealogy of the growing family of Adam and Eve. And I'm only going to highlight a select number of the individuals who are mentioned here. There's just too many to go into detail about. Cain settled in the land of Nod, N-O-D, east of Eden, and he had a son named Enoch. Cain's great-great-grandson, Lamech, is the first man recorded to have married two wives, so that's, that's quite significant. Uh, and he also claimed to have killed another man for striking him. So you begin to see how quickly people are diverting from the plan that God had put into place, and, and especially how much violence there is on the earth. Lamech had three sons, and they specialized in three different crafts. Jabal worked with livestock, Jubal played the lyre and the pipe, and Tubal-Cain was a forger of bronze and iron. So we see some of these trades begin rising up and distinguishing themselves as specialists in each one of them. We're also told that Adam and Eve had another son named Seth, and he's going to be really important moving forward in history. The text tells us at the very end of the chapter that it was around this time that, quote, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. So that is Genesis chapter 4. Now let's talk about an application before we close. We aren't really all that much different from these early human beings who lived in history. We struggle with the same things. We struggle with jealousy, like Cain. We struggle with vengeance, like Lamech. And we desire things that God tells us aren't good for us, like Adam and Eve. The Spirit of God gave us the Bible in part to help us understand that all humans throughout time have struggled in similar ways and that evil in the human heart has corrupted God's good creation. But the Bible was also written to point us to the solution to our sin problem. And that solution came in the form of a man, Jesus of Nazareth, who, if you didn't know, is a descendant of Seth, Adam and Eve's third son. Jesus came to the earth to fix the sin problem and to purge the corruption that's entered the world. And that's good news for all of us who have struggled and have failed and have disobeyed God, like Adam and Eve, like Cain, like Lamech.